In this one, we're going to talk a little bit about water and steam. This is latent heat we're talking about here. You reefer guys know what latent heat is. Now I've got a pot sitting here on a little hot plate and it's boiling water. I'm using American measurements here. I'm comfortable with them so I use them. Uh, sea level will be 212 degrees here I'm about 2,000 feet up, and so it's more like 208 or 209. But it's boiling. So all it's doing at this point is it's changing from a liquid to a gas. It's a change of state. In order to change state, it's going to absorb BTUs. In this case, 970 BTUs for every pound of pure water. So I'm absorbing a lot of heat here. This is actually, again, I told you water, in an earlier video I told you water had a specific heat higher than any other practical uh, substance. And that's true. It also has a higher latent heat to turn it into a gas from a liquid. 970 BTUs and in another video I'll talk about some of the different uh, refrigerants and the like that uh, have different BTUs per pound latent heat so if I boil this water and make it into steam it takes 970 BTUs per pound if I turn it back into water it takes it uh, gives off 970 BTUs. So this water can be a storage medium and it com commonly is. I told you about how the oceans of the earth are kind of the modifiers. They, they don't allow temperature, wide temperature variations on this earth. If you were on Mars or the Moon, you'd have these massive temperature differences between night and day. Of course, the Moon doesn't have night and day, but it does have a dark side and a light side. And there's these massive temperature differences. We don't have that here because of this stuff here. The specific heat of water, and it's also the latent heat of water. Because there's two ways that you can turn water into a gas. This is one of them right here. If I apply heat to it, it'll boil and turn into a gas. The other way is a little bit different and maybe a little odd. Water evaporates. Now, that does not mean water has to be at 212 degrees Fahrenheit to evaporate. It can evaporate at most any temperature. In either case, it takes 970 BTUs per pound. Okay, example, sweating. Human sweat. Okay, when we sweat, you get water on the outside of your skin, and it starts to evaporate. When it evaporates, it absorbs that 970 BTUs per pound. Now, the limiting factor in this is humidity. If you're in a very humid area, you folks that live in Mississippi, Texas, Georgia, Florida, uh, yeah, this is really, it's pretty obvious to you. Humidity is very high, and you will have sweat all over you because it has not evaporated, because air has an affinity for water. Water wants to turn into a gas to go into air. We'll just call it that. Okay, the water, when it goes into the air, there's slots, we'll call them slots, that they can fit into. There's spaces they can fit into. 
if there's already water there, there's not enough space for it to go in there. So it doesn't. So that's the two ways that water can become a gas. So how is that, what does that mean to HVAC people? What does that mean to industry? Well, water is plentiful, cheap, available most places. Those are the things that really make things work for uh, different substances. So we can say water, whether it's steam or whether it's liquid water, is a reservoir for heat. If I took water and boiled it into steam and I wanted to run that steam through a pipe, I could run it through a pipe, take it to a heat exchanger, and I could use it for space heating because I can condense it back into a liquid and it would heat a space. I could use it for industry, um, cooking vegetables, all sorts of things. So it's a substance that I can use to transfer heat. That's its primary usage. Now, does this mean anything to, let's say, a gas furnace? Yeah, it does. Most of the gas furnaces now are condensing furnaces. If I burn natural gas, products of combustion, CO2, and water, and heat. Okay, the water comes out as a gas. It's steam, because it's already hot. Okay, if I lower the temperature of that uh, steam, it's going to condense and give me that 970 BTU. So, uh, condensing gas furnaces take advantage of that in order to do their job. They get more heat out of the gas because they condense the latent heat out of the steam. That's it on this one.